Thank you so much for this beautiful stage, this very great venue. As I was so excited to come to the Midwest for the first time in my life. And it hasn't disappointed me to see the very spacious fields, uh, very spacious town, lively town. Uh, so very nice to be here. Thanks for that. Um, so this is where the bioeconomy is grown, literally. We also like to grow the bioeconomy in a bit different way. We have a pilot facility. This is our plant. It's in Ghent in Belgium. Other side. So this is what used to be a fire station that we converted to a pilot facility. And the way we grow the bioeconomy is from bringing our customers from lab to fab. We want them to be successful. We don't sell their products, that's what they do. We don't develop their strains, that's what they do. We just do that tiny part in between. That's quite a challenging activity. Uh, that's called scale-up. So we turn grams into tons. Here you see Elodie, our first uh, PhD student. Well, she's actually a doctor now. Uh, she worked on gas fermentation. She's doing that in our four times one liter gas fermenters. And behind her, you see a lot of our colleagues running ton scale fermentations um, in another part of our plant. So who are we? This is Anya. She's a team leader at our plant. Uh, we're a company since 2008. Um, we have installed approximately 60 fermenters ranging from 250 ml to 75,000 liter scale. So that's the range we operate at. Uh, we've invested over 80 million euro in our plant. We did that gradually. We grow organically uh, with all the, our customers and the different projects we've been performing since 15 years. We're not for profit. Uh, that's because we received most of the investments through European grants. Uh, but we don't get any recurring funding, so we have to be economically viable with the service projects we provide to our global customers. That's a big challenge. Uh, it's very difficult um, to be profitable uh, with piloting. Uh, so the small amount of profit we make, we invest again in the plant to build the equipment that our future customers need. That makes that we're fully independent. We don't have any industrial shareholders, and also that is of major importance to our customers. They don't want to bring their valuable strain and ideas uh, to a company that has ties with other big companies that might also be interested for the wrong reason. Um, we've grown to 170 employees. Uh, that's a lot of people. Uh, also that we did gradually, because of course we needed to be able to pay all those people. Um, they're mainly engineers, technicians, quality people, maintenance people. Um, and we um, implemented quality management um, certificates. We produce food grade products under FSSC 22000, but we also make technical products. We're located in Ghent. You see a nice picture of the medieval castle. There are some more modern parts to Ghent as well. It's a very lively city. It's a lot of fun. Our customers love to come. Uh, when they witness the trials we perform for them. So Ghent is in between uh, London, Amsterdam, Paris, um, so that gives a better idea of where it is exactly. We have a mission, like everyone else in this room, I guess, and that is to enable the transition to a sustainable bio-based economy. So our activities um, in that mission is um, process development, scale-up, and first of a series manufacturing. So we can help our customers manufacture the products until they are ready to outgrow us, build their own plant, go to a CMO, whatever they wish. Uh, in Nebraska, in Southeast Asia, they can choose. I don't have to explain the reason why we still do this and why there's such a hurry uh, to these activities. Um, these are curves of the uh, annual temperatures since the past 70 years. The top line is unfortunately this year, uh, so I hope we can all consider this as a red line. So we turn to the bio-waste economy. We want to be a one-stop shop in the bio-waste economy. Um, we want to be able to bring in the biomass, pre-treat it, because not all biomass is fit to throw in the fermenter. We do biocatalysis, 
fermentation, green chemistry, and we have a very big uh, tool set of downstream purification equipment to deliver a refined bulk business-to-business -business product to our customers. Some examples of biomass feedstocks, the first generation glucose, dextro, um, sucrose, first generation sugars, of course, a second generation lignocellulosic, corn stove or miscanthus, hardwood, and side streams from food industry. We want them to use every last molecule uh, and valorize it. We can even treat organic waste, uh, not in the same equipment as in, we, in which we produce uh, food products. Um, but we have the capabilities to do that. Oh. And we want to be able to use gaseous carbon, CO2, CO, uh, methane, uh, and convert it to products in our gas fermentation equipment. So the products we make are very diverse, food products, materials, chemicals, ag tech products, preclinical therapeutics, materials, um, yeah. And so how do we help our customers? They typically have a very great idea that they developed in the lab. So they did the basic research. Um, there's a very high technological risk, very low capital requirements. But by the time they want to be really successful with their product on the market, the capital investments increase tremendously. Um, and um, of course, some translation needs to be done between those two TRL uh, levels. Um, and that's actually where we come in, uh, to bridge the valley of death. Um, yeah, so besides a very nice animation about the valley of death, there's a lot, of <laughs> a lot to be done there. Um, so you need a lot of equipment uh, that is not big enough um, to yield you um, an affordable uh, or economic product. Um, you need people to run that equipment. Uh, you need people willing to run into a lot of trouble uh, to get you through that valley of death. Uh, so all that is what we bring in. Um, a list of our fermenters. Um, we, we really range from 30 liter in stainless steel to 75,000 liter in stainless steel, of course. Uh, we run batch fed, batch continuous processes. We grow all kinds of hosts, bacteria, yeast, fungal, microalgae strains, usually in aerobic conditions, but we can also do anaerobic fermentations um, as well as gas fermentation, as I already touched upon. Um, we will bring out a small movie about our 75 cube fermenter. <laughs> our communications team was incredibly proud and got so creative about it. Um, so any similarities with existing movies is purely coincidental. Uh, follow us on LinkedIn, uh, you will see this. Um, our downstream purification tool set is uh, very broad, ve and that's very important. Not only can we do all the steps from cell lysis or separation, um, uh, cross-flow filtration, ion exchange, chromatography, uh, solvent extraction, crystallization, drying, evaporation, but we can also do that at all those different scales. Bench scale, 100 liter, 1,000, 10,000, and 50,000 liter scale. Because sometimes you need to take uh, a lot of steps to really get there. Sometimes we can go big quite quickly, and then you have to return with your second generation process or uh, pure optimized string. <clears throat> so some examples of who we helped um, from lab to fab. Uh, in the 15 years that we've been operational, we had quite a number of success stories. One of them is Enough, Scottish company. Uh, they produce a mycoprotein um, as a meat replacer. Um, after the scale-up at our facility, they received um, a grant from Europe to build a flagship plant. Uh, they did that in Sas van Gent in the Netherlands. They partnered up with Cargill for that. They co-located on a Cargill site using their low-grade sugars. Um, to produce this uh, fungal protein. Um, we've collaborated with ArcelorMittal, a steel producer um, on gas fermentation, um, and they built um, Stilanol, uh, which is a two million liter gas fermentation plant in the port of Ghent, actually quite near our facility. 
Uh, so we've been converting their steel mill off gases to ethanol and other products. So that's what they're now doing at this scale. Um, for Ivanic, we've scaled up their remnolipid biosurfactants um, and they just recently started up their uh, full-scale facility in Slovakia. Uh, and Celtic Renewables, also a Scottish company, um, they had access to some uh, whiskey side products, draft and pot ale, that they wanted to valorize, and we've been converting that for them in, in an ABE, anaerobic fermentation, to acetone, butanol, and ethanol. Uh, and they built their first plant and are planning to build a second plant. Another example of a company that will commercialize quite soon is Onigo Bio, a spin-off from the Finnish Institute of Technology, VTT. They're producing a bio-identical ovalbumin, ovalbumin egg protein. Um, it's produced by a fungal strain. It has foaming, coagulation, emulsification, and binding properties. So you can imagine uh, the problems that gives in scale-up. Um, of course, this is a great alternative to animal proteins. Um, it has identical quality, the price is better, it's animal free, uh, and of course it's more sustainable. So our role was to optimize the fermentation and validate the fermentation at scale, to develop the DSP and optimize it uh, and scale up the entire process. They were very successful and raised um, almost 70 million euro uh, this year. Um, some examples of completely different types of projects, just, just uh, to see, to give you an insight in the breadth of products and processes we are running. Ways to Funk is a European project um, in which we've uh, produced lactic acid and biosurfactant from waste, uh, used cooking oils, other uh, waste fats, um, and organic waste streams, like supermarket waste, um, because, of course, um, farmers grow their crops, um, but there are also a lot of residues. Um, processing plants also have residues, consumers have residues, uh, and instead of digesting them to methane, uh, we thought to add a circle uh, to the butterfly uh, and make valuable products from those side streams. Um, so you see some of the partners in the, in the project, um, and you see some of the lactate we, we produced. Uh, so pure lactate salt from food waste, um, and surfactants uh, via fermentation. And one of, our, of the partners, Ecover, uh, produced a thousand bottles of cleaning agents um, with the products we produced in, the, in this project. There were some follow-up projects, uh, Surf's Up. Uh, it's a demo project. Uh, in which we will use um, a sustainable, uh, safe and sustainable by design microbial and lignin-based um, biosurfactants for different applications, and a flagship project for the lactic acid uh, pro products, um, coordinated by Triple W. So they will build a flagship plant uh, in the Netherlands uh, to convert food waste to. Uh, lac lactic acid for polylactic acid or uh, cosmetics applications. I talked about gas fermentation a couple of times. Uh, we built a 150 liter gas fermenter in a sea container that we place at the location where the gas CO2 mainly or CO is emitted. Um, we incorporated an, an electrolyzer in the container uh, because the microbes typically use some hydrogen as well. Um, an example of a project in which we use that container um, was um, Biosfera, in which uh, we drove the, um, the container to Finland. Um, there, uh, VTT uh, produced syngas from wood residues. We converted the syngas uh, to acetic acid. That acetic acid is then fed to our aerobic fermenters, where oleaginous yeasts uh, produce medium and long chain fatty acids um, that we purified in our DSP plant uh, to microbial oils, which are then uh, hydro treated um, to um, aviation fuels. 
So how do we do all this? Um, every project is different, feedstocks are different, final products are different, uh, but still we noticed um, some things are always the same. Uh, there's a structured approach to piloting, uh, and that's where our experience comes in. Um, we bring in this equipment, a wide variety of unit ops, state-of-the-art equipment, industrial equipment, uh, and we maintain it very well. Uh, we have all the analytics to follow up the process in detail in a 24-7 operation. We have all the technological know-how. Our engineers know how to treat all these different feedstocks and make all these different products. That's really the know-how we bring in to your process. We have a very structured preparation. Uh, we want to know all the what-ifs and all the plan Bs and all the backup plans and the decision trees. We write that down, send it to our customers for review. We execute as agreed, um, communicate about that uh, on a very daily basis. Oh. If any unexpected events occur, we have to sit around the table, talk about it, because that's where the learnings come. And I just wanted to say, it's all teamwork. This is our team, very happy to work with you um, in a very close communication. Thank you. Thank you.